we're going to, we're going to read there. Again, we're going to talk about the uh, communion today. We're going to talk about the, the purpose of communion and, and focus on a couple of reasons why we receive communion. Amen? And, how, and the importance of it. Now, this, this particular verse I'm going to read right now is in all four Gospels and in the book of 1 Corinthians. And it says in uh, verse 15. I will start in verse 14. He said, And when the hour had come, he sat down with the twelve apostles. Then he said to them, with fervent desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is finished, fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave it to thanks and said, this, take, this is, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my blood, body, which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup after supper, supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Praise the Lord. And uh, as we read this, I want to focus on some reasons. Now, I think of the blood covenant all the time, because we're blood covenant people. We are bought by the blood of Jesus. We're purchased. We're, we're just a peculiar people because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's important. And, you know, even in Hebrews chapter 7, it says, by so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. It's a better covenant. It's an extension of the Abrahamic covenant. And over in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6, but now he has obtained a more excellent ministry inasmuch as he is the mediator of a better covenant established on better promises. And that's what we have. And see what communion does and we do it once a month you can do it once a day you can do it twice a day you can do it every day you know once a week we do it once a month and i really believe that sometimes we lose sight of the importance of what we're doing here it's not just okay man it's july 1st it's sunday we're going to rush through the sermon and we're going to have communion at the end a lot of that everybody's going to be happy but that's not the way it's going to that's not the way it should be all right, because what communion does helps me remember something. It helps me remember Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. All right, and the reason why he did it is because people forget. People forget. Uh, we forget the price that Jesus paid. Right. You know, salvation is free, Amen. but it cost God a lot. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and and even in our own life. And in the natural, we have several days of the year to help us remember things. We have Memorial Day. We have Flag Day, right? We have Veterans Day. And this week, we have Fourth of July. And everybody, they're already cranking up for Fourth of July. Last night, fireworks were going on. I just got an email from Pastor Hagen that he says it's it's something over rainbow, rainbows over rainbow or something like that. Huh? Rockets over, that's it. Rockets over rainbows, you know? So everybody's gearing up for Fourth of July because it stands for our independence and bondage from another nation, okay? But we forget. The people in the Old Testament forgot what God had, did, did, had done for them. So he gave them feasts, and he gave them memorials. He, they had, we have the seven feasts, the most important one of those seven feasts. To, to them was the Passover, because that represented their deliverance. But even with all those feasts, they still forgot and did dumb things. We don't do dumb things, though, right? <laughs> anyway, so Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 23 says, Take heed to yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and you make for yourselves a carved image from anything which the Lord God has forbidden you. Then we have, I'm going to read a bunch of scriptures. Psalm 78, verse 7. That you may that they may set their hope in God and for and not forget the works of God. You know it's interesting over in Psalm 103. 
Turn here. I want to just read one thing real quick. Psalm 103. It is so important. And it's easy, man. When, when life starts happening, sometimes it's easy to forget that, oh, no. wait a minute. You know, I, I, just a real quick story while you're turning here. I have like that, you know, all that insurance stuff that you pay with your water bill, you know, so it takes care of your electric, it takes care of this, and it takes care of that. And and I just get everything, except they won't do my heater because it's, uh, they're not doing them combo units yet. But anyway, so, I, I, but I got everything, you know, from the water main, in my house, my electric, you name it, I got it. Air conditioning. Air conditioning. $400 later, I remembered. I had that insurance, and it wouldn't cost me a thing. Because the Freon ran out, and some guy came and put it in, and he said, that's $400. I said, <laughs> so you take payment plan, you know, and uh, then then it dawned on me, I, and I got one of them things, and it says your air conditioning maintenance has renewed. <laughs> well, that's what we do with God. We get in the middle of something that is just absolutely almost devastating, and we forget we have a contract with God. That has over 2,000 promises in it, tailor-made for you. But yet we sit there and, and we get freaked out, like I do with the air conditioning. <laughs> but it's the truth anyway. Psalm 103, this is interesting. We know the first bunch of verses there, but verse 7 says, He made known his ways to Moses. See, Moses knew God's ways. The children of Israel knew God's ways works or God's acts and over here in, in, in Jeremiah not Jeremiah where were we just reading Psalm, Psalm 78 he said forget they, they would forget the works that God did but M Moses never forgot it because he understood God yes. alright and the, like the, what we just read Psalm 103 bless the Lord on my soul and forget yeah. not everybody said you know, we can say it this way. Bless the Lord, all my soul. Don't forget all his good things that he's done for you. All the benefits he has for you. And, and then you don't need a contract. Just read the first seven verses of Psalm 103. It's right there. It's an outline. I say it every time we have communion. I say it's the declaration page of what belongs to you. And then inside the word of God, if you're willing to take the time and read and study, you'll find out all about healing, all about prosperity, all about relationships, all about everything. But if you're not willing to take the time, like I had a declaration page that says, Air conditioning. But I didn't take the time to go look inside it to see Pastor Ray. I don't know where he is. He's playing the hook. Anyway, he 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 broke a windshield on one of his cars. But he had a hundred and fifty dollar, two hundred dollar deductible. But he found the clause in his insurance policy that said they're gonna pay for the whole thing. Because then he reads everything. <laughs> he just reads it all. He said, damn man, don't go there and pay the 150 bucks if you break your windshield. He said, I break my windshield, I need a new car. <laughs> but he said, I said, why? He goes, go look in your policy. Because you got the same policy I have. In New Jersey, man, you're paying. It's there. They will replace my windshield. Hallelujah. <laughs> the guy in the window place. He, he put that 150 in his pocket, my friend. Thank you for that. And when we forget about the things of God, we, 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 we have a, a danger of forsaking God's ways. Yeah. Jeremiah, a voice was heard on the, on the desolate height, heights, weeping in supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way. They have forgotten the Lord their God. Return you backsliding children. And I will heal your backslidings. And indeed we do come to you. For you are the Lord our God. So it's important. Now you believe. I believe in prosperity. Okay. 
But we, there's another one. Prosperity is great. God wants to bless you more than you could ever imagine. But there's a danger when into your prosperity that you have a tendency to forget God. Okay? I could give you a, a litany of people that I know who love God, got saved, God prospered them, but you don't see them anymore. And they're not, it's not that they're not coming to church here. They're not going to church anywhere because their prosperity has them so bound that they forgot the one who gave it to them. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 12 through 14 says, least when you eat and are full and have built beautiful homes and dwell in them. See, God wants you to have beautiful houses and he wants you to dwell in them. And when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Because God is the one who gives you the ability to get wealth. And he does it for one reason and one reason only. So he can establish his covenant in the earth. Trials that we go through could lead us to forget God. I was just talking about that, you know. I mean, you can get caught in the middle of everything and just forget. I'm in covenant with God. And, and the one feast that God gave all the Israelites was the feast of Passover. He gave the six other ones, too. You know? Uh, and so what happens, there's this danger we can forget about God's goodness, his grace, and his power. And, and you know what? It's all about his goodness. It's all about his, his grace. And it's all about his power. And that's all available to each and every one of us. Amen. Hallelujah. So he gave us communion to remind us of the price he paid to cleanse us from our sin. Isaiah chapter 53. You know, and these are verses you've probably heard before, but you know what? I have to be like the apostle and say, just keep in remembrance of these things. But he was wounded for, verse 5, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Yes. First Peter chapter 3, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, and being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. All right? The bread reminds us of his broken body. You know, I don't know how much time... I, if, if, could you play those videos just without any sound? I don't know. Last night, before they played, last night, it's just two minutes, about six or seven minutes long, I it. But when I was studying last night, I looked up the Passion of the Christ. Because the definition I have of, that I want to say, is probably the, the videos tell a whole lot better than I can say. But I did look at a commentary of Jim, Sibel, what's the, the guy's name? Kabil. Uh, Do you know? During the making of that picture, he almost died twice. The doctor says, get him off the cross, he's going to have a heart attack. And you know what he said? He said, what a way to go. Playing Jesus. That's what he, because he's a born again, spirit filled. He said, listen, if I die making this movie, a lot of people are going to come to Christ. He said, and, and, and he got hit by lightning. When he was making a movie too, carrying a cross up in the thing, it, it broke his arm. He was hanging on a cross. His, he, when you see him hanging on a cross, and you see him doing it, his shoulder was dislocated. Wow. So it's just amazing, you know, the depiction of that movie. And again, just play that. And you know, the crucifixion, and, and it was probably one of the most brutal and torturous things. Here we have, you know, first of all, before Jesus even went to the cross, you can watch that. He started in the Garden of Gethsemane. He realized what was going to happen to him. The beating he was going to get. And that he was going to be separated from his father. And so it started there. And then he had to face the agony of the beating that they gave him. And you see that little post that they're going to put him down at? And you see that guy was just, not that one, the one before. He just stepped in to play that role that day. They filmed it. Because the other guy got sick. Anyway. But anyhow. But they have him on that little post. Well, you can't bend down and you can't stand up. Any of you try to just do that for a while? You just bend down like this and just hang there. You can't go always down. You can't go always up. And why they're beating you. 
beating him. All right? And, and, and he went through six trials. He stayed up all night. Jesus lacked sleep. And then they gave him over to these Roman soldiers that was going to beat him. And you, and you know the, uh, the whole thing. I mean, they put the thorns on his head. They, they weren't just little deals like this. They were like this. Poked through his head, almost into his brain. They put a robe on him. They crowned him with the thorns. You know, they put blindfolds on him. You know what I liked about this? They put blindfolds on him, and they began to slap him and said, Who hit you? And he never answered them. You know, he probably could have gave them their, their name, their mother's name, their grandfather's name, right on down, all the way to trace their lineage right to Adam and Eve. But he didn't. But he didn't. Because he suffered for us. That's what we're, that's what we're doing today. This is what it's all about. He was mocked. He was mocked. I don't know how long. How was that? The three minute one or the six minute one? Huh? All right. We'll speed it up a little bit. Then. Let it, all right. Let it play. All right. But the scourging that he took, the beating that he took. And, it, and that is, these Roman soldiers, they were trained for this. I'm going to give you a little scenario that happened. Saturday, there was supposed to be this big beach party up at Jenkinson's. And uh, you know what happened in Seaside a couple of weeks ago, the riots that took place on the beach and all that. Well, they planned to do the same thing up at, up at Point Pleasant Beach. Uh, unfortunately for them, everybody got wind of it. So when you came up there Saturday, there was Point Pleasant Police, Seaside Heights Police, Brick Township Police Department, the Ocean County Sheriff's Department, and the State Police Tactical Force. All over the beach. I mean, they were on their quads, the state troopers and everything. And uh, I said that because and they were up, up on, not on the roof, but up on the balcony, and they had those sniper telescopes, right, yeah. and they were panning the beach with it. And so they were the tactical people. And they said, those guys love that. That's what they're trained for, but they never get to do it. Mm -hmm. right. So even though there wasn't an incident that happened, they were loving it. They, they were just like, these Roman soldiers, that's what they were trained for. And they loved it. So, and by the way, nothing happened that day anyhow. That was good, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want you to get a real good view of that, man. He did that for you. And that's the price that was paid. We always say, we're real cool to say salvation is free. That's what salvation cost right there. So every time you think that you want to do something wrong, think about what he paid to keep you clean. Amen. Let's flip it to the, the, the crucifixion. All right? Crucifixion, when, when they crucified Jesus on the cross, I mean, they were just experts at what they did. And usually, you know, it would take three days sometimes for people to die when they, when they were on a cross. Three days. That's why they broke, their, they broke their legs. And the reason for that particular thing is, uh, the fact was, it was a death of suffocation. Okay? If you, you hung that way for a period of time, your muscles in your chest cavity start to... Uh, become paralyzed and you can't breathe so you start to because you're just hanging and people say well they were really nice they put that little footrest there for Jesus that they put that there on purpose so he would suffer longer it wasn't a little comfy deal for him like a little pillow to put his feet on I hear people, guys preach this I think like you idiots that was there because they knew that the pressure 
would cause him to suffocate. And the only thing he could do is lift himself up so he could take in air. But when he's lifting himself up, the nails are through his feet. So the pain again would paralyze him. And then he let it down. So death on a cross was an up and down movement. So when you hear somebody say they gave Jesus a little foot pillow, pick up a rock and hit him. <laughs> because that was designed specifically to make death take longer. Can you say amen? Yes. amen. Just bit, put it to when he's on the cross. Just, can we just... But it was the most humiliating thing that uh, anyone could go through. And so, that's why they bent the knees. They put the hand, the minute, and the minute they put the nail here, how many of you ever had a numbness in your arm? Well, figure that times a hundred. The minute they popped that thing and it went through all your tendons and everything. Sometimes you let your arm sit too long like this and it falls asleep. Well, that's what was happening. The price that was paid. And we're going to just, oh, well, we're going to have communion today. We have a little grape juice and a little uh, a wafer there. And we did our duty. No. That's what paid the price. Right there hanging on the cross. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. All right, you can put that down a little bit. We can shut that down. So here we have, down here we have, uh, people say, how come you use uh, white grape juice? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Because we know people are clumsy sometimes. <laughs> so we just didn't want red spots over everything, okay? But the fruit of the vine. When we take this, it reminds me of his blood. Hebrews tells us in, in chapter 9, verse 22, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. No forgive, no washing away of sin. And we know he bled as he died. We know that. We just was watching it. From his back, from his head, from his nails, from the spear in the side. He bled. And that blood was for us. That's what we have to remember. Okay? It didn't come easy. And again, I go back to this thing about salvation being free. And it is free. But really, there was a high, high cost to pay. Jesus paid that price for us. Just think. I was thinking. I was just thinking about that. Like, you know, uh, this morning I was up early and I was down in my office. And, and, I, and I was just thinking about the suffering and the pain that he went through. I, I can't like comprehend it oftentimes. You know? Uh, and I think that Mel Gibson did just a phenomenal job on that movie. I don't care what anybody says. And he's got the sequel coming out next. So that's going to be good. But anyway, it's a free gift to send. So, communion is for us to remember. Communion helps us personalize Jesus' death. It was for you, it was for me. Okay? He, he gave us two ordinances. He gave us baptism. When you're baptized in water, you are personally identifying with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And as the summer goes on, we're going to do a, a baptism, a water baptism at my house, okay? But, so if anybody wants to be water baptized in the next couple of weeks, we'll put a sheet out there, okay, about water baptism. But as you go under the water, what people don't understand about water baptism, when you go under the water, you're identifying with Jesus' burial and his death. It's a picture of his death. As you start to connect, Jesus died. As, as, and then when you're under the water, it's, his, it's a type of his burial. But then when you come up, it's a type of the resurrection. And, you're resur and what you're doing is you're, it's a public identification with Jesus Christ, personal and republican. We don't think too much about that. Because for Christians, when somebody gets water baptized, it's a big deal. But back when John the Baptist was baptizing people, and after Jesus arose from the dead and they baptized people, they were making a statement. Just like that woman with the alabaster box and, and the, the people who burned their books. 
They were making a statement. I am giving up my old way of life. Amen. And now I'm following Jesus. Because I am publicly and personally identifying with his death, burial, and resurrection. I'm a follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, their families would forsake them. Their friends would forsake them. And they would be on their own with their Christians, brothers, and sisters. Amen. Today we have a big part. And that's, that's okay. But let's understand, we suppose that we live in a Christian nation and it's very well acceptable. There's other places in Africa and other third world countries that it's not so accepted the way we do. Okay. For whoever's ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So, if you're ashamed of Jesus today, there's a real good possibility he's going to be ashamed of you. But I'm saved. Are you? Just throwing it out there, okay? Uh, as we saw the description and we eat the bread, we want to feel that, uh, when I look at that, I want to feel like I was there at the event. I don't know how I would have reacted being there, but still, like it happened in my lifetime. The Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, he never gets old. The word never gets old, ever, ever gets old. So as we as we drink the juice, it, it takes us back to a time when Jesus shed his blood. And really, it's, it's not his blood. It don't turn into his blood. It's just a representation of his blood. And it's a group, you know, they call Christianity the bloody religion. And people try to take the blood out of Christianity anymore. They don't preach the blood anymore. Uh, what's her name? I can't remember. Billy Brim. Billy Brim, man. She's a blood preaching woman. It's all about the blood of Jesus. She gets so mad when people try to take the blood out of Christianity. Because without the shedding of blood... There's no forgiveness, there's no forgetting, and there's no remission of sin in our life. That's what it's all about. But we want to make everything politically correct and nice. And it's written, it started, like my wife just said, in the garden when Jesus bled, uh, sweat, blood. It's a bloody religion. Not that we go kill people like some other religions say we have to do. It's just a bloody religion because it's the blood that washes. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it might sound gruesome, but it's the only way God could get it done. Right. He had to give up his son. And so with that, and we'll bring this to a close here in a minute, that's why baptism and communion, really, anybody can take communion. You know, people say, what happens if, if somebody takes communion and they're not saved? They're just an unsaved person taking communion. Yes, amen. Now, for Christians that take communion, and they haven't asked God to forgive them. That's another story. People said, what happens if a person gets water baptized and they're not saved? They go down a, wet, a dry center and come up a wet center. That's it. End of story. Don't mean anything. We try to spiritualize it all and make it. Then we, that's what happens. We start getting into spiritual witchcraft. With that, if a person receives communion and they're not saved, nothing's going to happen. The ceiling's not going to fall in on them. But boy, if I was a believer... And I was harboring something in my house, my heart. You better make sure I'm make sure I'm right before I receive the Lord's Supper. Because there's specific instruction that Paul gives the believers that says, "Don't drink it unworthily." Okay, not discerning the Lord's body. All right. So those things we have to understand, and he says it here. You know, it helps us. Uh, apply Christ this to our life it, it's it's a requires self-examination in our life first Corinthians chapter 11 verse 28 but let a man examine himself and so let him eat the bread and drink that cup we don't take it lightly okay the Bible says in first uh, Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 and 20 
Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Everybody say temple of the Holy Spirit. You know what a temple is? Yeah. It's something that you put that holds something precious. Okay. It isn't like your little army ammo box in your garage that all your nuts and bolts are in and you need three people to pick it up. That's not, it's all rusted. How many got you? Got that, right? They're just, I got one home. Just full of junk, rusted and everything else like that. But when you need something, son of a gun, it's in there. You got to dump the whole thing out on the floor. Then you got to get a broom and sweep up all the old rust and throw it out. And you throw all the rust and take it back in there. That's not a temple. It's a junk box. Some of us, our temple has become a junk box. Because we got it filled up with everything. But yet it says, don't you know your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Whom you have from God. And you are not your own. For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Which belongs to God. Your body don't belong to you. Amen. That's like revelation knowledge right there. I think if we realize that this body don't belong to us, it belongs to God, there were some stupid things we probably wouldn't have done in our life. And some stupid things you're doing now, you should, you'll stop. Okay? By becoming a believer, by believing in the cross, you give Jesus a right to run your life. Amen. Oh, God. I thought this was going to be fun. <laughs> See, this, this whole thing this morning directs my focus back to heaven. Not on me. Jesus said it. He said it in Matthew chapter 26. But I say to you, I will not drink of this, the fruit of this vine from now until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. See, there's a day coming when we're going to share this with Jesus himself. Amen. In person. How's he going to do that? I don't know. But we're going to do it. Okay? Behold, uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. It's amazing. He's waiting for you to make the first move. The woman with the alabaster box, she made the first move. Amen. The people with the, the magic books, they made the first move. And when they made it, revival broke out. Yes, amen. A riot started in that city because they made the first move. You know, probably if you do something God's telling you to do and you've just been waiting, you make the first move, revival will break out in your life. Revival will break out in your family. All those crotchety sinners that you want saved might get saved. But you're the one that's got to part with something, do something. Yes. Amen. Okay? Yeah. Amen. 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 So, how many people in here know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior? Amen. If you were to die right now, you'd know you're going to heaven. I know Ooh. I'm going to heaven, brother. I know. If you don't know you're going to heaven, you need to go to heaven. <laughs> you need to know for sure. Yeah. You know? Amen. I used to tell a friend of mine passed away when home be with the Lord years ago, my buddy Phil. He used to say, Hell ain't no weekend in the Poconos. <laughs> he looked you right. He was a big guy too, Bill. He looked you right in the face. He look at you, man. He he talk he talked to a telephone pole, a tele telephone pole about Jesus. I mean, it didn't matter. He'd go jogging during the day and he'd be gone for three hours. I met somebody jogging, told him about Jesus. That's the way he was, and you know, and he was like your typical Nicky Norker type of guy. He was a barber, you know, like he just he saw every cut go knives, you name it. Like he just sold everything. Anyway, but he he and his line was, "Hell is no weekend in the Poconos." So I'm here to tell you, if you don't know Jesus, friend, if you haven't committed your life to Christ, hell is your destination. And it's no weekend in the Poconos. And it doesn't get any simpler or direct than that. 
So today's your opportunity, if you don't know Jesus, to receive him as your Savior. If you know Jesus, you need to do some inner searching, and maybe you need to break your alabaster box. Okay? And get the junk that's in your life out of your life. See, with me, it's an ongoing, everyday situation. Every day, got to re-examine my life. People who you do? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Follow me around on the boardwalk one day. Examine yeah. your life 20 times a day up there. <laughs> you want to kill somebody. <laughs> but I, you know what they call me up there now? They call me the buck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so hopefully they're watching. Anyway, the buck. Because, like, we got people who rule with an iron fist. And then we have me. Because <laughs> after the iron fist comes down and the sand flies everywhere and people are ready to go home and quit, they send a buffer in to me to calm everybody down. Now, to be honest with you, sometimes I'd like to send them home. <laughs> but you know what? It is what it is, man. You know? You got a business to run. But, uh, so God gave me a little thing to do with, like, a couple of little guys right underneath me. I text them a couple times a day when I'm not there. And I look on the line, I can see what's happening on the beach. And, and tell them stuff like that. And like, they're like, they all turn around and respond to it, like, in such a positive way. But sometimes, to be honest with you, during the day when they're up there, I like to send them home. Because they're young. They're kids. They're a whole different generation. Is what they are. <laughs> I said that because we, we, we uh, examine ourselves all the time. All the time. To make sure we're doing right. And there's nothing wrong with that. So as we get ready for communion, I want us to examine ourselves. God, you want to start passing out the communion elements? God, you can come on up here. And I do want to ask, if you're here today, just as they're passing out the communion elements, if you're here today, and I want you to examine your heart. If you haven't received Jesus, this is your opportunity. And before we receive communion, I'm going to ask that question. And all you have to do is acknowledge the fact that I want Jesus in my life. That's it. And then we'll have communion. And then we'll have somebody pray with you also. You know what I tend to do oftentimes is, is I... I uh, <laughs> focus my life in heaven. I focus on heaven, what it's going to be like in heaven. And I know, like, if it's going to be like Jerusalem, there's got to be palm trees. <laughs> and I love palm trees. And you can tell because we got them in the foyer. So I'm just thinking, like, I'm going to be in heaven one day. Chilling under a palm tree. <laughs> when I go on vacation and I sit in a lounge chair under a palm tree, I say, this is heaven. They said, what heaven is going to be like? Probably better, though. But you know what I mean. It's like, that's my image of heaven. But we have to focus on life in heaven. Because the life on earth is tough. Thank God we have heaven to look forward to. Thank God we have Jesus in our life. Think of what your life in heaven is going to be like. And bring that down to today's. How it would affect your life if you could live that way now here on earth. Because you can't. Because the Bible says the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. So we can live that life. Unfortunately, we go through a life with a bunch of turkeys. 
And when we go through life with a bunch of turkeys, it's sometimes hard to soar like an eagle. Okay? But still, we could try. We're not perfect. We're going to lose it. But thank God. God made all of it. He knew it. I mean, Adam and Eve blew it, and they didn't have any sin. Think about that one for a while. They were pure from the head, top of their head to the soles of their feet, yet they blew it. So you think that God doesn't know along the line we're going to blow it? But he turned around and gave us the provision. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. To, we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and restore us back together. So don't get bummed out if you miss it. I mean, get bummed out just a little bit, but don't dwell. Right. You know? So I used to tell workers long ago, coming on an honorary customer, don't get honorary with them. Get in the car, drive a half a mile down the street, get out and kick the fender. <laughs> you know, I wasn't a Christian back then, but I just, just I didn't know about walking in love. I said, just don't, just leap. They say, okay, no problem, we'll take care of it. Adios. You know, then you go down the street, get a stick, hit the tire, I don't care what you do, but we don't want to lose a customer. And that's the way we should think. We don't want to offend people. We don't want to lose people. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Okay. We all have our communion this morning. Praise the Lord. All right, before we receive communion, I just want to ask this question and have every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here and you've never asked Jesus into your heart, you go, Pastor, what's that all about? You know what? You know in your heart what's there and what shouldn't be there. You know if you're right with God. You know if you're saved. You, you don't, I don't have to get up here and preach a sermon about it. You know, if you're searching, you know. And all you have to do is raise your hand and say, Lord, come into my heart and live and let the Holy Ghost start to change me. Amen. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my past. And help me change. And he'll do that. That's, people make like this. So if you're here and you want, you want to receive Jesus before we have communion, just slip your hand up real quick. We'll pray. Amen? All right. If you don't remember, hell is no weekend in the public number. I'm serious when I say that. Amen. Actually, hell's going to be closer to anything when you walk out this door after church because that's how hot it's going to be. <laughs> Just so you know. No comparison. No comparison. All right, you ready? Everybody ready? I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I always read this one because Jesus in the four Gospels has the, the story about breaking the bread. But Paul gets this from the, by direct revelation from Jesus himself. Amen. And he says here, for I received from the Lord. He received it from Jesus himself. That which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We're going to do that in a second. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord sup, the, proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. I just want to read another verse. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the blood, the body, and the and blood of the Lord. It doesn't say you're unworthy. Mm -hmm. He says when we don't examine ourselves and we don't ask forgiveness, then we, we drink it in an unworthy manner. And that's the point I was talking about before. If a person is not saved and they have it, nothing going on. But if you're saved and you have something in here, you've got to let it go. 
Just ask the Lord to forgive us. That's why we take that time to examine ourselves. Father God, we praise you and we thank you this morning. Father God, I thank you for the for the body that which was broken for us, Lord. Although not a bone was broken in his body, it was beaten for us, Father God. That we might have healing in our lives. And Lord, we just praise you for it. We thank you for it. Lord, we don't look at it lightly anymore. We look at the image of Jesus being beaten uh, in, in that movie clip, Father God. And what happened to him that day was ten times as bad. And Father, we just receive this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this grape juice that represents the blood of Jesus. The blood that was shed for us, that washed away our sins and truly made us the blood-bought church, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us never forget what the communion service stands for as we partake in this today and how important the blood of Jesus is. Father, we thank you for it and we receive it with thanksgiving in the humbleness of heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. As Pastor Andy plays, we're going to pray over these prayer requests. We're just going to lay our hands on them. And I do want to say, if anybody, if you have any handkerchiefs or anything, feel free to bring them in anytime during one of our.